What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to cover something that I've kind of been putting off for a while. I've been aware of a lot of these things, and I just wasn't sure how I was going to implement it into a video. And this is, with a bunch of the attachments within Modern Warfare, we have a lot of hidden characteristics. And what I mean by this is anytime you hover over an attachment within the gunsmith, you can see the pros and the cons. And it will tell you the areas that it's supposed to help you in, and the areas that it's going to be hurting you in. In many cases though, this is not actually a comprehensive list of everything that attachment will actually do for you, and we've seen this a little bit within my gun guides, but today I'm going to go into this in a bit greater detail to help you guys better choose your loadouts. And hopping into the first and quite possibly the biggest hidden characteristic with a lot of the barrel attachments in this game is the bullet velocity stat. Now this is something I've been covering in my gun guides for a couple months now with all of those guns, but I didn't cover every single gun before I found this out. But basically, if a barrel says that it reduces your bullet velocity, it also reduces your damage range, even though it doesn't actually state that it does this. And this is really strange because in almost every case where it helps your bullet velocity, it will state that it increases your damage range. So you'd think they'd do the opposite on the other end, where they have those as two separate values, one being bullet velocity and one being damage range. But it turns out that's just not the case. Now for quite a long time, I've had a lot of people wondering the exact stats on the barrels for the MP5 as well as the M4A1, simply because these are some of the more popular guns in the game, and also I covered them really early on, and therefore I didn't cover this damage range reduction due to the barrels because I simply didn't know about it at the time. So let's go through the barrels on these two guns. I'm obviously not going to cover every single barrel for every gun. I just wanted to stick to the two most popular guns that we see that a lot of people have been asking about. So with the MP5, we have the SSS light barrel, and this one says it reduces your bullet velocity. And with this one, we get a 15% reduction to our damage range. After that, I wanted to point something out. The monolithic integral suppressor on the MP5, it doesn't state that it increases your damage range, but this one actually does. You get roughly a 12.5% increase to your damage range with this barrel. As for the next one, this is the FSS Mini Barrel, and with this one, we get a huge reduction to our damage range. This will reduce our damage ranges by 25%, so I would say definitely stay away from that barrel. And this just leaves us with one last barrel that has a damage range change that wasn't actually stated within the description for the attachment, and this is the Subsonic Integral Suppressor. And with this one, once again, we have a massive reduction to our damage range. This one will reduce your damage by 30%. So that's a pretty big change to not have stated within the description of an attachment. And that pretty much covers it for the MP5. Now I want to move on to the barrels for the M4 that have an unstated range change. First up with the 11.5 inch commando barrel, the shortest one, this will reduce our damage range by 15%, even though that's not stated. After that, we have the 14.5 inch tack light barrel, which will reduce our damage range by 10%. And then finally, the 12.4 inch Predator Barrel, this is the suppressed one, this one reduces our damage range by 25%. So again, just like with some of the MP5 barrels, some of these have a really massive effect on the damage range of your gun. And I really do feel that this should be explicitly stated within the attachment, just because knowing this now absolutely impacts my loadout choices. I am going to stay far away from most barrels in this game that have a reduction to bullet velocity because for many of them, it's a severe reduction to damage range too. So that's the first thing I wanted to cover and the most obvious one. That's the one that's probably going to have the biggest impact on creating classes within this game. However, there's a few other ones that I wanted to point out that have been discovered in the community. A couple of them I stumbled upon. A couple of them I've just had people over the months telling me about them and I didn't know where to include it into a video until now. And the next one we'll look at, once again, has to do with the barrels in this game, and it appears that the length of your barrel actually has an impact on your hip fire spread as well. And again, I'm not going to go into great detail with every single barrel on every single gun or anything here, but I just wanted to show you guys, with the M4 here, I'm just going to fade between the different barrels on the gun. Keep in mind, the only attachment changing here is the barrel, and you can very clearly see the hip fire spread changing as the barrel changes. Now the general rule of thumb for you to follow here is the longer your barrel is, the wider your hip spread is going to be. And I guess logically that does make sense. The longer barrels are designed for more long range and they want to kind of keep them nerfed up close in order to balance them out. Whereas with the shorter barrels, they're designed for really close range combat. So having a better hip fire spread from a statistical standpoint, it kind of makes sense. 
The only problem is they don't tell you about this at all. And therefore, I just wanted to let you guys know, keep in mind with this, this change isn't massive by any means. And this isn't the type of thing that is going to severely impact my choice of attachments. But it is good to know about for sure. Similarly, we have another attachment that affects your hipfire spread that isn't stated anywhere, and this is the no stock attachment, or lack of attachment, I guess. With the no stock attachment, this actually tightens up your hipfire spread just a little bit. We're looking at like an 8% tightening to the diameter of your hipfire spread, so very, very minor, but again, just thought I'd point that out. There is a slight change while using that attachment. Now, looping back to the barrels, one other thing I discovered while testing the barrels out is some of them seem to have a very slight impact on your aiming stability or the amount of sway you have while aiming down sight. And just to show you guys here, on the left, I've got the Grenadier barrel on the M4, and on the right, I've got the 11 and a half inch Commando barrel. So on the left is the longest possible barrel for that gun, and the right is the shortest possible barrel for that gun. And at first glance, they look pretty much the same in the idle sway department. However, if you take a really close look at it here, you can see the barrel on the right, the dot never really leaves that circle on the target. Whereas on the left, you can see the dot will sometimes pass through that circle and it seems to have a wider spread to its idle sway. So this one is really minor, but it is something I thought I'd bring up as well, just because I did discover it as I was doing some testing on this. It appears that longer barrels may give you a little bit of extra idle sway on your gun, but not to a significant degree. I don't think that's enough of a change to impact my attachment selection. Now, another thing that I've had a lot of people ask me to investigate and look into is suppressors and whether or not they impact recoil. This is something that I hear about almost every single year with Call of Duty. There's almost always people claiming that the suppressors reduce your recoil. And this year's been no different. Had a lot of people asking about that. And in the past with Call of Duty, every time I've tested this, it turns out that's just not true. What it does is it tends to eliminate your muzzle flash or at least significantly reduce it. And this makes it a lot easier to stay on target because you can see your target a lot better. However, I did do the testing again this year to see if that's true. I tested with the three different common types of suppressors, the lightweight suppressor, the tactical suppressor, and the monolithic suppressor. And it turns out none of them seem to have any impact on your recoil, at least with the M4. I tested it on the M4 since that's kind of a ubiquitous sort of a gun. It's got a ton of attachments on it. It's also used by almost everyone. And at least on that gun, there is no change whatsoever to your recoil that I was able to detect. On that topic of suppressors though, this leads us to one last thing I wanted to share in today's video. Something I've talked about quite a bit in the past with the pistol gun guides, for instance. Previously, the description for the oil can suppressor said that it would actually boost your damage range, and it turned out in all my testing, it actually decreased your damage range with every single gun that you have the ability to put an oil can suppressor on. It turns out this has been fixed, but instead of fixing the issue and buffing the oil can suppressor so that it matches the description, they actually just changed the description, so now the description is accurately saying that this decreases your damage range. What that means for the oil can suppressor, though, is it's purely a gimmick. There is no reason whatsoever to use an oil can suppressor over any other suppressor type. It's only going to hurt you. Not only does it obstruct your iron sights, and even in some cases your reflex sight, it also has a ton of other downsides, including that loss to your damage range. But at least now I can say the description for it is accurate. And with that, that's all of the hidden characteristics that I've been able to find so far with the attachments in this game, at least for like the common attachments, the one that you can see across multiple guns. Of course, some guns have very unique attachments, and in those cases, I will have likely covered all of the attachment changes within the gun guide. But that's pretty much everything I've got for today's video. However, there's a good chance I haven't caught everything. There are probably some other stats out there that are impacted by attachments, without those attachments labeling those changes. So if there's anything else you know about or you're suspicious of with an attachment affecting something that it doesn't state, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if it's a big enough change, at least you might see that pop up in a future one of my videos. Now, before we wrap this up, though, I just wanted to share my quick two cents on this. I find this quite frustrating that a lot of these stats with these attachments are hidden and they're not labeled anywhere within the attachment. And it kind of goes along the same lines of the stealth changes and the stealth updates that they've been doing over the year where they've been changing things behind the scenes that directly affect the performance of our gameplay or the guns, for instance, without telling us that they're making these changes. 
And as somebody that loves mastering at least the understanding of how the game works over the year in order to make the right choices and maximize my success, I just find it really frustrating that there's a bunch of things going on behind the scenes that we just don't know about because they don't tell us about these things. Now sure, some of them are really minor, like the aiming stability with the different barrels, that's hardly even noticeable. But the things like the range reduction with the loss of bullet velocity, that's a huge deal that definitely affects how I would create my classes. And therefore, I really wish they would tell us every one of the changes that these attachments actually make. That's just my thought though. Of course, feel free to let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.